All right, so um, today we are exploring Meditations 2. And so Meditations 2 is perhaps the most well-known, famous meditation of Descartes because this is where he establishes that well-known saying, I think, therefore I am. So at the beginning of Meditations 2, Descartes says that he's going to continue to question everything until he knows that one thing is true or that nothing is true. So he's not going to stop. And again, he's questioning the foundations of everything. So he's questioning God. He's questioning his own existence because these are foundational for knowing anything else in our lives, for knowing anything else in reality. And so this is where he starts to think about, well, who am I, right? What am I doing here, right? He's hanging out in his apartment and he's home alone and he has a candle. So he's thinking about who he is and what he is and what he's even doing right now. So he basically says, well, I am taking the time right now to ponder and think about my own existence. So this must be indicative of the fact that I indeed exist, right? How could I think about my existence? How could I ponder my existence? How could I worry about my existence if I am not existing in the first place? That just wouldn't make sense to say that, oh, well, I'm thinking about something, but I'm not existing. So the fact that Descartes is thinking and pondering and that you are thinking and pondering about your own existence, right, is indicative of the fact that you exist. You wouldn't be able to think about existing if you didn't exist in the first place, right? So in order to be able to think about your existence, you have to exist in the first place, right? Existing is a precondition to thinking about existing. So voila, we know something's true, right? We have one truth so far, which is foundational, right? This idea that I think, therefore I am. I'm thinking about my existence, therefore I must exist in the first place. So the famous Cartesian quote here is revealed and we have one truth and now we can use this truth to understand other truths and other foundational aspects of our reality and our lives. So now that we know we exist, now that Descartes knows he exists, now he's going to ask some other questions about himself. So for example, who am I, right? What is the self? What does it mean to exist in the first place? Who is I? How do I know I'm different from other people? How do I distinguish myself from other people, right? The self versus the other. And so he says, well, I have a body, right? So he says, I have some arms, I have a head, I have legs, etc. I have fingers. And so this is his corpse, right? This is something that he's able to touch and that he thinks is a part of himself. But at the same time, right, he's still going to question everything about his reality. He's still going to question his body, he's still going to question his senses. And most importantly, he knows he has a mind. So he says, I ha I'm a rational animal because I'm an animal, I have a body, I'm a human, but at the same time I have this mind that's allowing me to conceive of my existence in the first place. So I have this mind, I have this body, perhaps I'm a rational animal, I don't necessarily know everything about me. He also says that I'm comprised by a soul as well but he doesn't really know what a soul is. He says, you know what, I'm not really sure what a soul is, so I'm gonna leave that and put that to the side because he doesn't necessarily feel like we can understand what a soul is within the confines of philosophy. So he knows he's a rational animal, he knows he exists, he knows he has a mind, he knows he has a body, and he sees the mind and the body as being very distinct from one another. And this is where he talks about the candle. So you might be thinking, okay, why is he going on and on about this candle, right? Big deal, There's it's a candle. Well, his ability to understand the essence and the nature of the piece of wax that comprises the candle is indicative of how the mind works. And it's analogous to how our external characteristics can change, but our essential mind does not change as humans. So he's looking at this candle and he's seeing the candle changing. So this candle is fundamentally a piece of wax, but this piece of wax is changing in smell, right? Think about the way a candle smells when you first light it and then once it goes out, it's a completely different scent. Think about how the candle feels. So the way a candle can at first be solid, but then it melts eventually the color of the candle, right? That can change as well, depending upon its temperature. 
So he sees all of these external secondary characteristics of the candle. And he says that even though the color and the texture and the scent are all changing, I still conceive of it as a piece of wax, right? I still understand that it's a piece of wax. I still conceive of it in my mind as a piece of wax. So what's essential to that wax's nature is not what we can understand from our senses. It's not how it looks. It's not how it smells. It's something else. So there's something that is more fundamental to that wax's nature, right? What constitutes that piece of wax, regardless of these external changes, is what comprises this wax's nature. And so he basically says that just like this piece of wax has a nature that's more fundamental than its external secondary characteristics, we as human beings have this internal essence of the mind, this ability to rationalize, this ability to think. So while our bodies change constantly, right? We, we can't trust our senses. We age over time. How we look changes, right? Our height, our body weight, our hair, all of these things change throughout our lives. But that's not our essence. That's not our nature, our fundamental human nature. So Descartes basically sees the mind as being superior to the body because the body, it's changing constantly. It's something that can be deceptive. We need to think about something else. We need to trust and understand something else. And so while he understands that the mind can make mistakes, he believes that the mind is more connected to our nature as human beings. It's what distinguishes us as human beings from perhaps other animals. So this is a conclusion of meditations too, right? We know that we exist. I think therefore I am. That is the fundamental truth. And now we can understand other truths. Now that we understand the self just a little bit more, now we can try to think about, okay, well, what else exists, right? Does God exist? Does um, the object of mathematics exist? And so that's what he will then talk about in meditation three.